What is going on guys, Josh here, and I know it has been a little while. I have been kind of MIA, I went AWOL, I was working on the Shopify Freedom Update, but I'm back. And in this video, I came with a banger, guys. I wanna walk you guys through kind of how we optimize and how we run our Facebook ads across our brands here at Ecom Freedom. Now, I wanna showcase to you guys three of my brands uh, that we've currently generated about $285,000 for the month of July, 2022. So if you guys want to know majority of our ad spend majority of our traffic is coming from Facebook and Instagram so contrary to popular belief Facebook ads are not dead it just means that we need to do better in terms of marketing and this is what I've always said from the beginning so in this video I want to take you guys through the back end of my daily KPI tracking spreadsheet in terms of how I watch ad spend as well as overall revenues and how in terms of cost per acquisitions can vary and fluctuate day by day and how this number specifically really can make a huge difference in terms of us making bigger moves in terms of scaling up our spend or us scaling down our spend. So that's what I want to show you guys in this video. And I know that it's going to be a little bit of a big one here, but just bear with me. I guarantee you it's going to be an insanely valuable one. So let's quickly dive into my computer. Let me show you the spreadsheet. Again, I'm gonna show you a smaller case study store. This store is doing about $30,000, $35,000 of revenue um, over the span of the month of July, but we're doing about 30% profits. So about 10,000 profit uh, for the month. Not bad, right? We don't do anything. We don't touch any of the ads or all that kind of stuff, but let me just show you. Okay, so now before we dive into the Excel spreadsheet, guys, I just want to validate my claims in terms of the revenue numbers our stores have done. So as you can see, this is the first store. We've gone ahead and done $225,000 if we round it up by 250 bucks. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and refresh this because I know that a lot of people care about this stuff. So quickly refreshing it, boom, it's all interactive. There you go. The next one, this is the store that does uh, the case study store that I'm going to walk you guys through about twenty thousand dollars on shopify for the month to date not too bad right definitely could be better but we are scaled down like i said right we've done we're not really doing too much with this store now on amazon though we've gone ahead and generated about thirteen thousand three hundred dollars right so if we add those two up we're about uh, thirty three thirty four thousand dollars for that particular brand now the final last brand is this one right here um, and this one did twenty six thousand uh, dollars this month however we are scaled down very very heavily Heavily from what we were doing last month so let me just quickly show you that because this strategy guys was actually used last month as well so we were going ahead and we had about $85,000 for this particular store there were a few issues in terms of our logistics so we do have to scale down just for the benefit of making sure that we provide the best experience possible for our customers as you can see we we're doing about 6k days right 5k days all that kinds of nice stuff yeah okay so if you guys have been following me for a little while you know that I like to know my KPIs before going ahead and running ads. For you guys who are looking to jump into this game, the biggest piece of advice that I would give you is you definitely need to know your numbers before you go ahead and actually start running advertising. Otherwise, it's kind of like you're just driving blind, right? And you're going to burn money quicker than anything uh, you've ever seen before. All right, so let's just go quickly go through this KPI spreadsheet because I have made a few changes to it. This is the exact spreadsheet that um, all of our Ecom Freedom students get as soon as they join. But for the purpose of this video and as a thank you to you guys I want to link it down below as well just so you can get a taste so you can add value we I want to make sure we add value first okay now let's quickly go through this so this one this model here assumes that you offer free shipping right so what we like to do is understand right what is the landed cost of your product so for example let's go and use my case study store as an example I have about $17 landed that includes my shipping cost but let's just go and break it fine like it costs about $12.50, I think, per unit. And then um, it costs about $5 to ship it here into the United States. We sell it for about $84, right? And there you go. So as you can see, by just putting in the numbers in this section right here, it's going to naturally spit out all of these numbers for you. So let me just quickly go through exactly what this means, right? So first of all, we have this break even point. This is the amount right here and why it's highlighted in green is because it's very, very important. I can spend $66.50 on acquiring one customer. Okay. Does that make sense? Let's continue through. The next important number that I want to kind of get to is the minimum return on ad spend. Now that iOS 14.5 is here though, guys, I would highly recommend that you guys look at ROAS on an ecosystem level rather than just a platform level, right? So, I mean, 
how much have you spent on ads? How much revenue have you generated? Calculate that and use the return on ad spend that comes from that calculation. In terms of this minimum ROAS, it means that I need to at least on Facebook, if I'm spending money on ads here, I need to at least hit 1.26 return on ad spend in order for me to be break even, right? Anything above that, I'm going to be profitable. Anything below that, I'm going to be losing money. Now, the next thing is I want to go ahead and have a look at my target cost per purchase or target cost per acquisition. For me and my e-commerce stores, I like to have a net profit margin of about 30%. So this number right here is the one that I'm going to be going for. Now, the other ones down here aren't going to be that important for the purpose of the lesson of this video. However, they are very important. So definitely have a look at it in your own time. Uh, one other thing I will quickly mention is when you guys open up this spreadsheet, definitely go to file and hit make a copy. Okay, do not try to edit this or do not request access. Unfortunately, I don't have time to just approve access and this is the master file guys I cannot let you guys play with it so forgive me for that one but let's continue through the next thing that's going to be really really important is like your cost references sheet so here you go ahead and figure out like what's the cost of running your business on a day-to-day -day level um, assume that you have you know wages and all these kinds of stuff right whatever numbers are relevant to your business go ahead and add it here and then it's going to calculate the daily average cost of your running of your business okay now let's go through in terms of the spreadsheet so this is the spreadsheet Sheet that you're going to see. I want to walk you guys through exactly how this is important. I want to walk you guys through the theory. Then I want to show you through the real life scenario of one of my stores. Okay. In column, uh, when you have the month 2022, right? What I want you to do is only touch B, C, and D. Okay. Do not touch any of the other columns. Okay. That's very important because everything else is already formularized, right? You don't need to touch anything. So what I want you to do is on a day-to-day -day basis, go through, figure out how many sales you're getting on Shopify. If you're selling Amazon as well, just total the two and just add this in. So let's say for example, right on the 7th, uh, on uh, July 1st, we got a sale of five sales, right? That equates up to daily revenue because it's going to calculate based off of this uh, the KPI spreadsheet right here, just like that, it's going to automatically calculate for you. And then you just want to put in your daily ad spend, right? Put in your daily ad spend, and then all of these other columns are going to populate. You're going to see your gross profit. What kind of gross profit percentage have you got? Your daily cost of goods sold, because based off of the numbers that we have, it's going to spit this out as well. But what I want to show you guys very, very importantly, right, is this variance column. And I think it's in August when I started including the variance column. Here we go. So right here, the variance column, right? Column L and column M, right? These ones are very, very important. Let's use this example again. Let's say we have seven sales. That's fine, right? And our daily ad spend was 300 per se, right? Let's just add a few numbers here, right? And we just go 250, um, let's go six and let's go 300 again. Okay, perfect. So we've got three days worth of data. Now, what I wanna show you guys is this so in column m right it's going to spit out for you guys what is your cost per acquisition so you can see here on the first second and third our cost per acquisition getting one new customer right was 42.86 $31.25 and $50 now what you will see is that column m is the one that's going to be the real driving factor of this it's going to tell you guys that there is an acquisition variance so what this one tells you is that it gives you a signal to tell you uh, is your facebook ads is your paid media efforts working well or are they working against you or they are the is the performance dropping right so if it if they're green right if it's green it means that the performance is good if it's zero like stagnant it means that you are on target right but if you are negative it means that you're spending too much to get an acquisition or getting a new customer and therefore you need to pull on the brakes so let's walk through this quick example for you guys let's say for example on uh, day one day two and day three right we had an acquisition variance of a pretty much seven dollars eighteen dollars and at the bottom here we had an acquisition variance of 0.3 based on this data i would be happy to pretty much say hey i've been profitable over the last couple days i would want to start spending more on facebook well, i want to drive more traffic right however because of this this um column j which tells you your daily net profit it will actually say that you've lost 22 dollars that day so it might not be a good idea to go ahead and spend more money right away however this can be adjusted because of the cost reference sheet let's say for example we just don't have rent right you just ship out of your own home then it looks 
looks much more healthier, right? So in this scenario, even though the acquisition variance on the third day was negative, because of the daily net profits over the last three days was positive, I've made $425 theoretically, I would be very happy to go to my main consolidation campaigns and go and spend more money. I would increase the budgets by about 20%. This is what the theory is, guys, and this is what we use day in, day out. Now, let me show you guys, now that I've explained you, um, explained to you how important it is to understand your cost per acquisition and understand how the acquisition variance, right? What your cost per acquisition and the difference between that and your target targets, these ones here, how that dictates your next move. Okay, so let me show you a real life example of how this spreadsheet plays out and how it helps me to make good decisions with my ad accounts, with my business. So this particular spreadsheet right here is the business that uh, we've generated about $33,500 worth of revenue for the month. Not bad considering we're not growing, we're not scaling, we're not doing anything, we're actually quite scaled down. But an overall e-ROAS e of about 3.32. So over all of my ad spend for this brand, we are generating about a 3.32 return. This is really, really good considering that our break even return on ad spend is like 1.6, something like that, right? Very, very healthy, okay? Now, let me show you guys exactly how I use the cost per purchase column and also the variance column to make good decisions. Now, I want to bring your attention to uh, these three rows right here, 24, 25, 26, right? That was July... 22nd, July 23rd, and July 24th, okay? Now, from these three days, as you can see, if we had a look at my variance, uh, well, sorry, my cost per purchase column, I spent $20 on average to get a customer, $34 on average to get a customer, and $1,388 on average to get a customer across those three days. Now, if we draw, if I draw your attention to the variance column, you can see that I've, I had on these days, I could spend an extra extra $13.80 per customer and still remain 20% net profit or have 20% profit. On the next day, we were kind of teetering around the 20% mark. So at that point, you know, I shouldn't have been touching anything. But on the day after, which was this one right here, I, had, I was able to spend an extra $20 based on my calculations here in order to hit my 20%. So as you can see, I had a lot of margin, a lot of room to move. So this pretty much governed my decision making with this business, right? And as you can see, on the next day, I actually bumped my main campaign, the budget, nothing crazy, just 20% because anything over 25% causes the ad account to go into learning again and it can cause instability. So for me, whenever I bump budgets, I always try to increase it by just 20%. Now, after that, what I like to do is I like to watch. I like to let it sit, ruminate, and just figure out what's gonna happen. So as you can see here from July 25th, onwards, right, you can see that I still had a lot of room to play, right? I was making profit. My profit margin percentages were 36%, 40%, and uh, just under where my face is, uh, 28%. So we were profiting. We were profiting pretty well, right? Well, I was really happy with this. Based upon this, I technically could go ahead and increase budgets again because um, well, we've been profitable. It's been working well. I bumped the budgets and my ROAS was still pretty high. However, because of this day specifically, and this was yesterday, uh, July 28th, from this day, even though we were still profitable at 2.56 return on ad spend, you can see here that the variance um, of the uh, uh, from how much I spent per customer to how much room I had to hit my target of 20%, it was kind of negative, right? So even though I was profitable, right? I, I had about, I was spending $1.80 too much for this customer, for my target at least, for my target for this business. Now, based upon this, I would not touch anything. I would want to leave it for one more day. I would want to let it run all the way through to the end of July 29th and then make a decision. If the profitability came back, and my cost per acquisition, I had a lot more room to move again. That's when I would make the decision to bump budgets again. But in ordinary circumstances, because of these three days, because the profit was good, 
because the I had a lot more room to play in terms of cost per acquisition, I had I could spend an extra 10, 15, 10 dollars more per day to get a new customer, and I didn't make a change because on this day specifically, today, right? Or yesterday, sorry, because it wasn't as good, I was kind of over, overspending. I would not make a decision. I would not make a change. Rather, I would wait until July 29th plays out, which is today. I would want to see how today goes in terms of performance. If the performance again is negative, then for me, that makes makes the decision very easy. Uh, what I would do then is go ahead and adjust my budgets. I would drop my budgets by about 10% or start to add new creatives in, right? Whilst I'm doing all this, I'm adding always new creatives in. So I wished I had a worse day for you yesterday, but I don't. So I'm just going to go into my ad account right here. And I've noticed that, well, technically speaking, I could drop this budget. So let's say, for example, today um, ends up being a negative day. Then what I'll do is I'll go into here, which is my main campaign right here. I would go in here, edit, right? Campaign budget. And I would just reduce, decrease the budget by about 10%. Something like this, right? 10% is going to adjust the budget here. And then I just hit publish. Then what I do is then I go back into the edit, the name right here. And I will change this to minus 10% like this, July 29. And I will keep this as a reference, right? So that I can go back to my sheet and I will know on this day I changed the budget and I sent a signal back to Facebook saying, hey, uh, Facebook, I'm not so happy with the results that you're getting me. Then I have a reference point, right? I can refer back and see, okay, ever since that signal, did my performance improve or did it deep uh, increase? As I make a change there and I rename the campaign name, what I would do here in my notes section of, um, of the uh, sheet right here, what I would do is I decreased main budget, main campaign budget, by 10% so that I know exactly when I come back in three days later or two days later or something like that, I would know exactly what I did because often at times, you know, life gets busy, right? I can't remember exactly what we do. So it's important to keep notes like this, right? Important to keep notes to understand what changes you're making and you have a reference point to go back to because the data doesn't lie here, guys. So I hope guys, you guys can start to implement this. I Like I said, I will include for you guys this spreadsheet down below just so you guys have access to this and you guys have access to these columns here that will just automatically do the calculations. Now, obviously make some changes yourself, but this uh, acquisition variance column is going to assume that we are targeting at about a 20% um, net uh, gross profit margin. Okay, guys, I know that that was a pretty hefty, pretty chunky uh, video, but I hope you guys understood exactly my, like the methodology behind it, because this is actually quite powerful. If you can start to utilize cost per acquisitions, right? Understanding how much you spend to acquire a customer and how the fluctuations um, in that cost per acquisition can drive your decisions to increase or decrease budget and therefore have a direct correlation to your performance in the ad account it can be game changing. Like just seeing this, right? It, it's like you open your eyes for the first time. It is amazing, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now, guys, remember, on Facebook and Instagram, just as a final note, I'm assuming that when you guys are implementing this, that you have already done the hard work of understanding your customer avatar, understanding uh, what kind of content that they like to see and making sure that your ad, your ad copy and your headline as well as your landing page are all integrated and all optimized so that it's going to cause the highest conversion rate possible. Okay. Now these kind of calculations, these won't help you if you have poor, you know, preparation in terms of poor ads, poor understanding of your customer avatar and overall just bad landing page and no CRO conversion rate optimization implemented onto your page. This is assuming that you have smashed all of the others, um, all of you've done all the preparation in terms of good ads, 
good landing page, good product, right? But this will not be the fix if you guys have, you know, a bad product, all right? So I um, hope this helped you guys. If you guys are scaling, I hope that you can use this and really scale even further. Let me know in the questions in this comment section down below. Um, i would be more than happy to help you guys out. And remember guys, I'm providing this Excel spreadsheet for you guys in the description below. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for your patience in terms of not me not being around, but I promise I will be around a lot more. And until next time, guys, I hope you guys are doing well and I'll catch you very soon. Bye for now.